Have you heard the phrase fade in effect bias and maybe you're wondering exactly what it is or maybe you want to know how to overcome fade in effect bias. That's what we're going to talk about today. I'm Simon Chappell. I'm the quit alcohol coach, the author of the sober survival guide and the book how to quit alcohol in 50 days. I also run an incredible members only stop drinking program. You're welcome to join and you can try it free for 14 days. The website address is on the screen right now. If you need extra support, tools and tactics to quit drinking, check it out. It's absolutely fantastic. So let's talk about fading effect bias. Fading effect bias is when we start to think that our drinking behaviour wasn't that bad after all. It tends to happen a period of time, maybe two or three months after we quit drinking. We've got through the honeymoon period and we've maybe faced some challenges but found ourselves outside of our comfort zone and started to feel like we need our original coping mechanism. For me, alcohol felt like a comfort blanket that I needed to soothe myself whenever I had to face anything challenging. And it's psychologically shown that the further away from a negative memory we move, the more it fades. And negative memories fade faster than positive memories, which is where the problem is. Although fade and effect bias has pros and cons, because negative memories fade faster than positive memories, it also means that we discard the memories of the regrettable behaviour. And anything that we feel emotional discomfort about, they all get discarded a lot quicker. So that's a good thing. It can work in your favour, but it can also work against us because we forget how bad it really was. And it's important to remind ourselves of what life was really like when we were drinking to ensure we stay on track and we don't let fade and effect bias become a reason that we start drinking again. So it's important to remember that over time, your mind will allow you to let go of those negative memories and it will keep the good memories. What you have to remember is that we place a high value on alcohol. We give alcohol credit for things that it doesn't deserve credit for. Let's say you went to a party when you were younger, maybe when you first started drinking and you had a great time at that party and you also happened to drink you probably would have given alcohol the credit for making it a good time. Next time you go to a party, you feel you need alcohol to get through it, to enjoy it, to have more fun. Even though alcohol wasn't the source of the fun, it was the people, you would have had a good time anyway. But we give alcohol the credit. And because we do that, the value we place on alcohol goes way, way higher than it ever should. We discard all the negative stuff that alcohol brings into our lives. We just discount it. And we give alcohol credit for just about everything. I use alcohol because I thought it helped me have more fun. I thought it helped my anxiety. I thought it allowed me to relax. I thought it brought so many positives in my life and I gave it credit for all of those things. But the truth was, it was taken away from me. It wasn't giving me those things at all. I have way more fun now I don't drink, but at the time I was stuck in my false beliefs and I couldn't see it and I gave alcohol all the credit. So in the context of fading effect bias, it's really important to remember that alcohol is not some kind of magic potion that brings fun, stress relief, anxiety relief, and all these other wonderful benefits into our lives. And it's so important to get really clear on your beliefs around alcohol to ensure that you can make a completely balanced judgment and that you totally understand the facts around that. Check out my other YouTube videos. They'll help you assess and analyze your beliefs about alcohol and really get to the truth around whether any of your beliefs are actually limiting you. Because that can be an issue when it comes to fading effect bias. If you're still hanging on to beliefs that alcohol can give you some kind of positive benefit. So fade and effect bias can be a big reason why people stay stuck and end up going back to drinking after they vowed never ever to have alcohol again. It's really important that you stay aware of it. One of the best strategies is to write out a list of all the reasons why you stopped drinking in the first place, why you made the decision to quit alcohol and keep that list with you. Put it in the notes on your phone or write it on a piece of paper and put it in your purse or your wallet. 
And if you find yourself fantasizing about alcohol or noticing that fading effect bias is starting to happen to you, that's when you need to look at that list and remind yourself of all your reasons why. It also makes sense to keep some kind of visual representation of how alcohol impacted your life and the reasons why you're actually quitting. For me, I chose that I never wanted to put alcohol in front of my son, in front of my wife, my career, my health. I never wanted to do that again. And I made that a non-negotiable commitment with myself. So keeping a photo on my phone of my wife and my son can be a really poignant reminder as to why I chose never to drink again. So think about whether there is some kind of image or visual representation, maybe even a video, that you could keep on your phone or keep close to hand that you could look at if you ever needed to remind yourself as to why you chose to make this decision in the first place. So much of the journey to quitting drinking is about awareness. When we stop drinking, we start to become self-aware. We start to reflect, we start to look within, we start to question ourselves and we challenge ourselves. Rather than just doing things on autopilot, we start to take a much closer look. That awareness is gonna help you. It's gonna serve you if you notice fading effect bias starting to come into play. With that in mind, it's also worth keeping a list of all the ways that your life has improved since you quit drinking. Maybe you feel calmer, happier. Maybe you've noticed your relationships improved. Maybe you've experienced having more fun since you quit drinking and you've got the evidence that that belief is actually holding you back and it's completely untrue. Really pay attention to what has changed. Really notice your limiting beliefs. Get the truth, get the facts and you can eliminate fading effect bias. It's also important to know that we move through this phase. It works rather like an hourglass. And this brilliant diagram from the Tempest blog shows you exactly how that works in most cases. If you know that this is common, this feeling happens for most people, but we come out the other side of it once we've moved through the middle of that hourglass, then you know what to expect. You know it's not gonna last forever just like a craving. So take the time to remind yourself of every aspect of your sobriety journey. And this journey goes in stages and you move through the hourglass. Let's look at each of those stages so you can understand that it's really common to have these feelings and to experience times when you feel outside of your comfort zone and you feel as though you might have lost something. But if you know that you're going to come out the other side and your life is going to be so much better when you stop drinking, then you can prepare for it. You can expect it and you won't panic if you start to encounter fade and effect bias. So the hourglass of change is used to describe the process of quitting alcohol. It's on the Tempest blog and I'll put a link in the video description so you can check it out. And it's an absolutely brilliant concept to easily visualize the stages that we can go through when we quit drinking. At the start, we might feel thrilled, scared, excited, terrified, unprepared, hopeful, or even hateful, all in one go, all at the same time. But we move forward, we get on with it anyway, we take that leap of faith. The second stage where the hourglass starts to move inwards is when we begin to move outside of our comfort zone. We've no longer got our familiar coping mechanism. It's no longer available to us and we might start to feel a little bit uneasy and unstable. However, by losing our unhealthy habits, we're making space for new and healthy coping mechanisms to come into our lives. Without doing that, we're going to stay stuck. So we have to go through this short term discomfort in order to make space for the new positivity to move in. The third stage is where things can start to feel difficult and we might think that maybe it wasn't really that bad after all. We might feel like we're losing our social life. We might have lost a few friends and we might start rethinking our identity and how that actually relates to our drinking. And this is where fading effect bias can really start to take hold. We might have forgotten the pain and the consequences that alcohol brought to our lives. And this is where we need to remind ourselves 
of exactly what it was really like. We have to keep that data, that information about the truth. The fourth stage is the middle, the crossroads of the hourglass. This can be the most difficult stage. We've reached a point where we've got rid of a lot of things that weren't working in our lives, things that were holding us back, but we're still learning. We're still looking for the things that really do work and add to our lives. And this is the point where we might feel that sense of loss about our drinking behaviour. And it can even feel like a grieving process. To start with, we feel denial. Then we might feel anger, sadness. We might bargain, which is where we try and moderate drinking rather than accepting that we need to stop altogether. But the goal is to move to a place of complete acceptance. But if you feel like this is a grieving process, allow yourself to grieve. Most importantly, this is the stage where you really commit to your goals. It can almost be like a recommitment to your goals and we continue doing the work. We move through the crossroads. The next stage, the glass is widening again. This has to be a good thing, right? We start to gain things back into our lives. The alcohol-free world that we've worked so hard to create begins to expand and it brings new things into our lives. We start to see our true identity and realise that actually alcohol was only a very small part of our expansive and ever evolving personality. You might still feel like sobriety is hard work, but you're noticing positive changes. So you decide to stick with it. And after all, you've already moved through the middle. Why would you go back? The next stage is often where we overcome a challenge. We are confronted with something that we didn't think we'd ever be able to handle without drinking alcohol. Maybe that's a wedding, a holiday, seeing an ex-partner or a night out with our friends. But then we do handle it without alcohol and it feels like a massive win. We feel like we've claimed back a huge amount of the power that alcohol had over us. And it makes it so much easier as we start to go forward. Our confidence really starts to grow. We start to enjoy life and feel like sobriety is really working for us. And then finally, we reach the other side. We make it out. We make it through to the other side of the hourglass and we feel amazing. We're no longer craving alcohol. We're no longer thinking about drinking all the time. And we're feeling great about the new life that we've shaped for ourselves. But you have to remember that quitting drinking is an ongoing process. It's a journey. And I wonder if that journey ever actually ends. And sometimes you can go through the hourglass of change multiple times. If that's the case, allow it to happen. Just be with what comes up for you. Be reflective, be self-aware, pay attention and know that you're only going to improve on your own individual journey.